With the spine working nicely, it's now time to rig the arms. The arms are fairly complex because they need to rely on both FK and IK manipulation to have the most flexibility. In IK mode, you move and rotate the hand around and the whole arm reacts to that motion. In FK mode, you usually only rely on rotations of the arm limbs. Furthermore, you will need to think up a way of blending between the two modes. First things first. Here you will set up the FK system to handle rotations. Later, you'll move on to the IK system and the blending between the two modes. The FK setup is not so much different from what you've done before. Basically, you need a set of shape controllers with each shape to control each joint, that is, the shoulder, elbow, and hand. Zoom in on the left arm. Double-click the shoulder FK bone to select the FK chain. Isolate the selection. As before, you can use any shape you want as a controller. A common shape in these situations is a three-ring shape. It basically starts off as a simple circle, which is then converted to a spline. You can then make the spline renderable in the viewport to see it better. You can then enter spline sub-object mode, and with angle snap enabled, Rotate copy the spline by holding shift to create a sphere-like element. Exit spline sub-object mode when done. Rename the object Zombie Left Shoulder FK Controller. Align it to the shoulder bone. Pivot to pivot in position and orientation. Chances are it's the wrong size. If that's the case, enter spline mode again, select all three sub-circles, and scale them up or down to a center point. You might want to temporarily unhide the geometry category. Seeing the actual zombie geometry will help you decide the size of the controller. It's important to be able to select it even with the geometry displayed. Once done, you can hide the geometry category once more. You can fine-tune the shape further, for example, by bringing its thickness value down, or number of size and interpolation. After all, the controller doesn't need to appear in the final render. You can also make it the same wire color as the FK bones. In this case, dark blue color from the AutoCAD palette. Once you have the shoulder controller in place, make a copy and name it Zombie Left Elbow FK Controller. Align it to the forearm bone, again in position and orientation. Make one final copy and name it Zombie Left hand FK controller. Align it to the wrist nub. Keep in mind the three controllers do not need to be of the same size. If you wish, you can unhide the geometry category again, and then resize the elbow and hand control shapes to a smaller size. Remember to always do so at a sub-object level. To rig the FK chain, it's a pretty straightforward affair. First, link the control elements together, hand to elbow, and elbow to shoulder. Next, select the wrist knob, and constrain its orientation to the hand controller. Similarly, Select the forearm bone and constrain its orientation to the elbow controller. Finally, select the shoulder bone and constrain its orientation to the shoulder controller. As you rotate the controllers now, the FK chain reacts accordingly. There are a few additional adjustments that you can make. Consider the elbow controller. It should really only rotate in one direction on the local Z axis. 
You can force that behavior by going to the hierarchy panel under link info and lock the X and Y rotations. Furthermore, if this controller is to only rotate in one direction, then you could potentially delete the two redundant rings. Granted, this is only for visual purposes, but a good reminder of the established limits for this joint. Actually, you can push this a little further. The three controllers you just created are for FK rotations only. This means they can move relative to one another, courtesy of hierarchical links, but they really should not be able to move on their own. To prevent any such accidents from happening, you can lock their positions on all three axes. This way, you won't be able to move them around individually, but they do move around relative to each other because of the parent links. One more thing is left to be done. Exit isolate mode and link the shoulder control shape to the clavicle. The whole FK chain needs to react to the clavicle rotation. Try rotating the various controllers to see the effect on the FK chain. Before moving on to the IK chain, it is important to freeze the transforms on the controllers you created. Remember it is always crucial to record the initial pose as zero position and orientation. Select all three controllers and use Alt plus right click to freeze the transforms. In the next movie, you work on the IK chain.